Welcome to the up and down matches for the Season 5 of 2012's Code S. I am Wolf, with me is Kaldor. It's time to get Group C started. Exactly, Group C today with six players in total, so we could end up with 15 games if needed. We have three Terran players, we have two Frodo's and a Zerg. We had a crazy day yesterday. Yeah, It yesterday. wasn't always about the games, <laughs> it was no. about... Uh, we, we had a lot of coffee uh, attacks. We it had was fun. I actually enjoyed it. To some extent, it was really fun. It was fun, you know. Our set was destroyed. Uh, I had coffee all over the place. The world fell apart, but we kept going. We had Genius versus Mini on screen, even though they weren't playing against each other. And uh, yeah, and, and they actually brought Genius back to the studio. The studio was actually us. not the only thing that was falling apart. I mean, if you think about Genius against uh, D.I.G. when he played, it was also a little bit weird. Genius was not in the best shape today, but that can be said about a lot of these players. We had Especially Slayer's players, you know, with all the, the stuff that's going on right now. Um, yeah, but we had Zerg and a Terran player advance, and we're having a quick look at the results now from yesterday before we jump into today's games. Yeah, we'll take a look at those, pop them up on screen so you guys can get refreshed about what happened yesterday. At the end of the day, Dongri Gu with his early pool was able to take out Bomber, and therefore Bomber was not able to advance, losing the final game, and Yoda taking a 3-1 in the group as well will advance. A bit of a surprising feat. Yeah, we had this final game between Bomber and Yoda, and Yoda decided in his favor. Genius without winning a single map. The same is true for SDX. And of course, today's matches, we have five players. Let's have a quick look. Here they are, FXO, ASD, MVP, Keen, Bion, Prime, the three channel players. And of course, Parting, making up one of the Protosses. He's up against Shine, as well as Trap down there at the bottom right. So we've got two Protosses. Shine, like I said yesterday, the odd Zerg out. He's the only Zerg player in the group. Only has to practice for one matchup. Or excuse me, uh, only has to practice for two matchups. He doesn't have to practice for that one ZBZ. And he's got a, a Terran dominated group to go up against here. Probably practiced a lot of ZBT. And you know, I read a joke today in one of the forums. That I don't really remember which one it was, but someone was like, okay, I have no idea who's going to win this group, but I definitely know who's coming in second. It's going to be Party. Because this guy, he's always a little bit out of luck, he just performs so well, but in the end he falls short, takes second place. The same was true at WCS Asia, for example, where he took the second place. So, Parting, of course, one of the Protoss players, or one of the players today in general that a lot of people expect to end up being in Code S. But this group is a very stacked one, especially with a player like Keen, who sometimes is on a crazy high level, and on other days just, I don't know, seems to be, I don't want to say mediocre, but just a little bit off. Yeah. Well, ASD is trying to make sure his mouse pad is flat enough for that mouse. You don't want to have a mouse pad with bumps on it, especially when you got that laser. Laser bumps into those bumps, and uh, things can get kind of out of hand. I'm personally really a bit of an uh, MVP team fan. If he is in good shape and plays a matchup that he is really comfortable with, then you see uh, just ingenious play from him. A few months back, especially his Terran versus Terran was crazy good. This is, might be something that we're going to see today. ASD, on the other hand, definitely not a pushover. The first map today is going to be Daybreak in our Terran versus Terran. It's going to be a long day, guys, so get yourself something to eat, get yourself something to drink, coffee, if it's late at night at your place. And or if you just like coffee in the morning yep. or in the midday. Exactly, get a coffee, get something to eat, and enjoy the games with us. We are heading into game number one here at the GSL Up and Downs. This is Group C. Map number one is Daybreak. It is ASD up against Keen. The games are brought to you by Colin. Of course. Yeah, no doubt about that. I double check. Yeah. I looked down, I realized where I was. I knew what I was doing. Casting the GSL view. You have to talk like that during the intro, you know what? <laughs> wow. Can you hear the song or is it yeah, me? Yeah, it's IU, man. I wonder if ASD requested that. But either way, here he is down at the bottom left. He may like IU as much as I do. He's from the team FXO. He is... ASD. <laughs> <laughs> no intro for this guy. But yeah, he's ASD. His Street Fighter voice isn't quite sure yet, but we are pretty certain this yeah. is ASD. Starting to the top right is his Terran opponent. He starts for team MVP. It is the Commander. It is Commander. FXO nope. ASD. <laughs> no, no, no. That is not true. It is not ASD. Street Fighter voice, you are wrong. All right, let's try this again. He is... It is the commander. It is... No. 
<laughs> MVP King. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, Detective Wolf is on the case as usual, and uh, the reason why I feel that uh, we had that moment where ASD was on camera early for seemingly no reason was so that Legend could alt tab and turn off his IU music he was listening to. In the background. <laughs> Listen, Legend. We all know you like to listen to these songs, but now everybody knows yeah, all on. around the world. Legend doesn't listen to the song, man. He only watches the videos. Well, at least it wasn't a really embarrassing song or something like that. Well, in the game right now, we have already a bit of a deviation between the opening for both players. Currently, ASD going for one barracks into expand, whereas Keen, on the other hand, started things off with a very early gas. Oh, actually, ASD takes his own refinery now, so no command center after all decides to get gas, but a lot later than yeah. Keen. Way late. Yeah. And this may indicate uh, one of these builds we've been seeing with a few Marines and Hellions, where you basically just get the gas to get the dropship out, and you will see the timing of Keen's gas now. Now, when he sees this, this may actually make him change up his build a little bit so he can get that Viking out in time. The Terran versus Terran win rate for both of these players. This is, of course, the GSL win rate. Only the GSL matches that they played in this matchup, and AST is looking a little bit better than Keen, but you have to, uh, of course, note that he has a lot less games played. And I looked up the recent matches that Keen played in the TVT. Uh, a couple of players that he was able to take out was, for example, Baby, who he defeated at WCG 2012 qualifier. He was also able to perform really well against Sting with a 4-0, took down players like um, Jaggi with 1-0, which was in the last season's up and downs. So in the Terran versus Terran, he definitely can shine sometimes, and we are going to find out if he's able to take down ASD, who has not the best win ratio in Terran versus Terran overall. As I said before, the stats that you saw earlier on the screen only reflect his GSL yeah. performance. He lost to Maru, for example, in Code A. This was the match um, that, he, that made him play the up and downs in the first place. So in the Terran versus Terran, he struggled a little bit. Before that, at MLG uh, Summer Championship, he played against Hart. Didn't win a single map against him. So at this point, Keen maybe with a little bit of an advantage in this matchup. But in Terran versus Terran, as an enemy mirror matchup, simple mistakes, small mistakes can change the game very, very quickly. Yeah, it's, it's certainly true. In this matchup, uh, there were, there were actually in every mirror matchup, there are moments in the early game where you can just die, uh, even arguably more so than in any other matchup. CBZ, you've got Baneling, Speedling attacks like in end games. In this matchup, you've got Hellion drops, you've got Siege Tank all ins, and then, of course, uh, Pros versus Pros, you have the four, four gateway attacks, Blink Stalker builds, things like that. And, um, this matchup was really transformed, though, in the mid to late game. And like you said, one mistake with uh, your Marine control, for example, you walk to a line of siege tanks you didn't know about, can change everything. Yeah, Terran versus Terran, not as fragile as other middle matchups are or have been. But still, uh, in, uh, if you fall behind, it's sometimes pretty hard to recover. Whereas the TVT, I feel, is a little bit more forgiving. Yeah, because you can really control your opponent's positioning. I love this matchup so much for that. And Keen, of course, wouldn't be Keen if he wouldn't build at least one Hellion. This Hellion is currently scouting. And he also uh, dropped the scan in his opponent's main base. Oh no, it's actually a ASD who scouts with yeah. the scan. He sees the cloak research, yeah. and you know, it could be a fake. He does not see the Banshee pop out, so he's not aware of he's what type of build it is exactly. He already prepares for the Viking, so he will have one Viking the second Banshee is currently being built. He's also getting turrets, which is really going to help him out with detection. Playing super safe. Yeah. And saving scans even as well. He's really prepared for this Banshee. It's going to do virtually little to no damage. Yeah. The Harvest account, on the other hand, is currently the same, so ASD is in an economy at the roughly the same position that Keen is. And here comes the Banshee trying to find a sweet spot where it can actually take it down at least a few of those workers. He, he wants to. Yeah, this is really nice positioning here. Yeah, well done. He gets one, and that's likely all he's going to get here because the one scan will actually end it. He wants to save his scan energy. Yeah. <laughs> Which is <laughs> as we want to repair the turret, I'm pretty sure that's not gonna be a concern. <laughs> yeah, probably not. But well nice micro by Keen so far. He needs to do some damage here, that's what he wants to take on another SCB. Really well done. And number three. That is actually quite a lot that he's able to achieve here given that we have this many units waiting for him. Wow, and nah, the Banshee dies in the Just end. Just awesome was control close. by both players. You know, Keen's so careful with the Banshee, but ASD is waiting until the last second to use the scan. He really didn't want to use it. He was like, if you really decide to commit to fighting my Marines, then I will use it. Another Banshee comes into the, into the back here and stops a depot. You know, if you think about what he has on the map, then this is really impressive. We have missile turrets, we have Vikings, we have scans that he uses, but it doesn't really matter. Keen is still getting his kills. 
Yeah. And in fact, the Banshee still remains alive. He might get one more Marine. Ah! Uh, he oh barely gets away. Two hit God, points left. With two hit points. And Keen is moving out with a large force across the map. With his earlier gas, he's been able to produce so many more units. He can actually, if he keeps that Banshee alive, use it in the army later. He's actually picking up more Marines right now. It's so important for the push. Nice micro here, though. Really well done, but the front is now under siege. There's only one Marine in there. I feel like he did not really see it, but he has his siege mode. And that's something that he can, of course, now use, putting a lot of pressure onto ASD. A great game so far by Keen, I have to say. This Viking is so important at keeping the Banshee back so that you can't get good vision here. But, you know, this is inevitably going to fall, this bunker. And when the next siege tank arrives, that is going to be the concerning moment for ASD because he himself does not have any siege tank production. He's trying to get Hellions out right now. Yeah, at some point he will have to come in and try to break through, but the longer he waits, the more siege tanks there'll be. There's number two. I'm a little bit surprised Keen didn't really bring any SCVs with this to help prepare and buffer a little bit. But as so, uh, it may be possible with enough Hellions to break through. It's just going to be so difficult. He's going to definitely have to pull a bunch of SCVs as well. And Keen does not have very many Hellions. And now the bunker is gone, so he can siege forward with his army. He moves up with the rest of his Marines and also the Banshee. Here comes the move out by ASD, trying to take down the Banshee first. Keen is not able to save it, but the rest of the army of ASD just dies. Keen is completely killing him now. Yep, both siege tanks survive here, and that is going to be it for ASD in game number one. A nice defense against the Banshee, but he was not prepared for this many siege tanks, this aggression with the Banshee, followed up with three siege tanks now, and he's going to have to GG here. He's trying to save his orbital right now. He really, really kept him busy. Did a great job here, was able to make sure that ASD could not get his tech up. And now all these resources that he dumped into missile turrets, the scans that he used, everything working against him. He's not going to die here immediately. He tries to wait in his base that he has, trying to control the, the funnel point, the choke. But that's all that he can do. I think he thinks Keen's on one base. Or, or else I think he would have left. He's staying in this, he keeps his orbitals alive. He's got a ton of uh, energy in his orbitals that he doesn't want to use for scans because he knows that Banshees could become a problem for him still. He's going for a drop with Hellions, which is really smart. This could really do damage to someone who's so focused on the front, but back at home, Keen has a siege tank ready for defense. He's got a bunker. He even has a siege tank and Marines in his main base. This drop may even be spotted by that uh, depot. He knows fully well that he's in a great position you know, with him being on two bases and ASD only on one, so as long as there's no natural for ASD for the FXO player, Keen is completely fine. He can just macro it up and work with the advantage that he has. Ah, Banshee is still trying to move in here. Nice shots off at the Hellions, and he needs his scan to take down the Banshee. The Viking is still there. But yeah. losing SCVs once again, moving into the siege tank fire. The Marines, there they are. Keen is taking down everything. ASD drops down to 40 supply again. Yeah, it looks like ASD can't even kill a third of Keen's army. And that's how behind he is here. I mean, this is basically a third of his army. Two thirds of it is back home. Keen is dropping a mule here. He's like, why are you still in this game? GG. He's like, leave. And that's what ASD does. The game is over. A little bit unfortunate here for ASD, of course, to start off with a loss. But Keen played well. Deserves this win. Good start for the MVP player. Yeah, a very aggressive opening. In fact, both these players usually play so aggressively in Terran versus Terran. And in this case, ASD tried to play a little more passively. His late gas build was a little bit strange. He was able to tech and be ready for Banshees while still getting that command center up. But he was, again, like I said, not ready for that siege tank aggression. It's as if he thought his opponent was on one base uh, when he saw the tanks and he just he didn't know how to react exactly. On the other hand, now we are going into uh, the second game, which is going to be a Terran versus Protoss. Yan up against Harding. And of course, a lot of people want to know how L is doing these days, if he's able to get out of this group. Yeah. Doesn't know if uh, he's caught Kira yet. He's been working on it while he's practicing. Well, he has one advantage. There's no Kira in this group, so yeah. he has a good chance of surviving. Maybe he will be the Kira of this group. Yeah, typing, out, yeah. typing out their code A spots on the keyboard. He's talking about Death Note, man. He has the Death Keyboard. Yeah. He basically does, man. Harding, on the other hand, is known for his matchup against Terran, of course. There they are, both of them. L to the left, Harding to the right. I haven't seen L this happy since about a third of the way through the season when he started to show motion. Our aims collide. 
Uh, this uh, this is actually a really cool match because I think both of these players are really good in this matchup specifically. They've shown really unique strategies. They've both innovated, parting with his 3 Nexus, 8 Gate, double expand build. We've seen Bion with his Siege Tanks in uh, Terran vs. Protoss just adding Siege Tanks in throughout the entire game. Sometimes doing that build where you go up to 4. Right now looking like you may not have slept too much last night. <laughs> Practicing the entire night. The map is Whirlwind, so we have a pretty huge map for this Heron vs. Protoss game. And both of the players are ready, just waiting for the game to start. We're not wasting any time here, guys. We are going right into the game. The map is loading. Harding has this little hair that sticks up. See that? Yeah, he actually does. <laughs> he can't stop looking at it. Is that his hair or is that just some behind? No, yeah, it actually is his hair. He looks a little bit like Sapi here. You know, Sapi always has that when yeah. he comes Always one or two. But now we're getting things started here. The map is done loading. We're in the game. Parting up against Ghosting here at the GSL Up and Down Scoop C.